Getting candida. It's way too easy. Candida is a yeast that naturally makes its home in the digestive tract. It lives there with a collection of other microorganisms, called microflora, including other yeasts and lots of beneficial bacteria. Yeast and molds are part of the kingdom of fungi. One of the roles of fungi is to decompose organic compounds, which is what it does in the digestive tract. In nature, fungi play a crucial role in extracting minerals from the soil and providing them to plants in exchange for a drop of sucrose. It's a mutually beneficial arrangement. In our bodies, these yeasts are naturally kept in balance by the other beneficial organisms, such as the commonly known lactobacilli. And here's how candida often starts. Beneficial bacteria are reduced or killed off entirely by antibacterial medications. It's true we sometimes need antibiotics if our bodies are overwhelmed. But it can also be the case that the doctor has prescribed the antibiotic for no good reason. For example, colds and flu are viruses and do not respond to antibiotics. Antibiotics don't just kill bad bacteria, they kill off the good bacteria as well. And it's the good bacteria that keeps the yeast from growing out of control. This is why many doctors now encourage patients to repopulate their gut with good bacteria once the course of the antibiotics is done. But antibiotics prescribed by your doctor are not the only place you can get them. And if you eat meat from a grocery store, you are getting unnecessary antibiotics with every bite you eat. Livestock in industrial farms are fed thousands of pounds of antibiotics every year. Not because the animals are sick, although they often are, but because the antibiotics make them grow more quickly. It's a great business practice that's very bad for our health. So once the good bacteria are dead, the yeasts have lots of space to spread out. Yeasts eat sugar, and industrialized diets have plenty of that, so they chow down and fill the empty spaces. Americans eat an average of 120 pounds of sugar a year. In nature, when yeast and fungal spores start to grow, they send out what is called mycelium. These are the easiest to see in piles of wood chips or sawdust. They are the long white strands that weave through the pile like a net. Yeast spores do the same thing in the body sending out mycelium which penetrate the walls of the intestines and grow into other organs. This damage causes inflammation and pain and sets you up for allergies and even more inflammation. So it's the combination of prescribed antibiotics and those in our diet in combination with an overabundance of sugar that causes candida.